Senate's Ways and Means Committee will hold a hearing featuring some of the average Americans who are unfairly harassed by the IRS. Joining me now with a preview are two members of that committee, Texas Congressman Kevin Brady and Illinois Congressman Aaron Schock. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you uh, for being with us. Thank you to be with you. All right, Congressman Brady, first, let's set the table. Do you see this as a political enemies list, sir? You know, I do. Uh, in the fact of the matter is, the new acting commissioner had an opportunity today to actually shed light, to tell the truth about where these abuses of the IRS have been, who initiated, how broad and wide and deep it is. Was this personal information shared with other agencies which harass tea parties in my uh, region? Uh, but I think he's choosing to try to douse the flames rather than get the truth. Tomorrow's hearing is about hearing from the victims of these abuses. I think they'll help shed light on this whole investigation. All right, I think the question, though, Congressman Schock, that we now have to answer, the administration, through Jay Carney and others, they have, they've tried over and over again to say this, these are rogue agents out of Cincinnati. Now, to prove that point, let me play Jay Carney and, and others saying that very thing. Watch this. Uh, line our IRS employees in Cincinnati improperly scrutinizing 501c4 organizations by using words like Tea Party in quotes and Patriot. IRS employees are placed in a position of great trust. Employees, the tax exempt unit of the IRS office in Cincinnati, abuse this trust. The uh, apparent conduct by IRS officials in Cincinnati. The exempt organization's field office in Cincinnati, Ohio, used inappropriate criteria. Well, the president doesn't know about everything that is going on in every agency of government. Should Mr. Boehner have known? Because this is a neighboring district in Cincinnati where the IRS office is. I don't think you can hold him accountable for what happened in that IRS office. Now, Congressman, before I get to the specific things that people in Cincinnati have said, do you believe those statements, those talking points, to be true, sir? Absolutely not. Sean, I raised this very issue two, year, two weeks ago at our first Ways and Means hearing, working with the Thomas More Society, uh, based in Chicago, my home state, that helped lay out a series of pro-life groups, not 912, not Tea Party, uh, not the groups that they say, in states like Iowa, Texas, California, the Pacific Coast region, uh, where these people were illegally targeted, asked questions like, what are the contents of your members' prayers? Uh, asked them to pledge not to protest in front of Planned Parenthood in exchange for their 501c3 status. Clear violation of, of their constitutional right. This is proof. We don't, we don't have to wonder. We have copies of the IRS stationery with their letterhead asking these inappropriate, illegal questions, which well, completely, to your point, proves that their statement that this was just Cincinnati is completely uh, uh, bogus. And this reminds me too often of what happens in my home state of Illinois. The Chicago machine has infected Washington, D.C., and these guys are using the muscle of government to try and snuff out any political opponent they see. All right, I'm going to go through a series. We have the transcripts of interviews with IRS employees from Cincinnati and, and elsewhere, and I want to go through it because that narrative that they've been advancing does not appear to be true based on what these employees are saying. For example, uh, one of the transcripts said, did you, your supervisor, give you any indication of the need uh, for the search in any more context? He told me that Washington, D.C. wanted some cases. Next one, another interview with an IRS em employee. So as of t uh, April 2010, these 40 cases were held at the moment in your group. Is that right? Some were. How many were held? Less than 40. Some went to Washington, D.C. How many? I sent seven. And then it goes on to say, in another question, so what do you think about this, the allegation that's been made? Uh, I think you've seen a lot of press reports that there were two rogue agents in Cincinnati responsible for all these issues that we've been talking about today. What do you think about those allegations? Quote, it's impossible. As an agent, we are controlled by many, many people. We have to submit many, many reports, so the chance of two agents being rogue and doing things like that could never happen. Now, I have some more I'm going to get to in a second. Congressman Brady, what's your reaction to that based on the talking point that it has been advanced that these are rogue agents? 
at the very first step of this investigation, which is going to be very thorough, very complete, the very first step, IRS workers themselves just rejected the whole White House uh, line of spin on this issue. Of course, they didn't embark on a very controversial, probably illegal uh, targeting and leaking of private and personal taxpayer information without uh, direction from up above. How far that goes, how broad that goes, we're going to get the truth. But think of this. This happened in the very first step, I think, as we go through all the abuses on the targeting of donors and organizations, the leaking of private information to media, liberal groups, and maybe to campaigns. I think we're, mm -hmm. I think this is the first step. All right, Congressman Schock, let's go through two more portions of IRS employees answering questions. Uh, number one, question. And you've heard, I'm sure, news reports about individuals in Washington saying that the problem was originated in and contained in the Cincinnati office and that it was the Cincinnati office that was at fault. What is your reaction? Answer. Well, it's hard to answer that question because, in my mind, I hear people saying that we're low-level employees, so we're lower than dirt, according to the people in D.C., so take it for what it's worth. They were basically throwing us under the bus. And one last one, question. So it's your perspective that ultimately the responsibility, the responsible parties for the decisions that were reported by the IG are not in the Cincinnati office. Answer. I don't know how to answer that question. I mean, from an agent standpoint, we didn't do anything wrong. We followed directions based on other people telling us what to do. Question, and you ultimately followed directions from Washington, is that correct? If direction had come down from Washington, yes, but with respect to this particular Tea Party applications, et cetera, I believe so. This, well, this seems to contradict everything that we have been told about this story about rogue agents. Right. I mean, these well, are the you know, employees. What is that? Where does that take us now? Well, it takes us much closer to Washington, D.C., and much closer to the White House. You know, Sean, two weeks ago, uh, Jay Carney stood in front of the nation and said, uh, we didn't know anything about uh, this situation. This was a, a, a case of a few rogue agents in Cincinnati. Since that time, we've learned that the White House chief counsel was briefed. We learned that this, the White House's chief of staff, the president's own chief of staff, uh, his closest confidant was, was uh, briefed. We also know that it wasn't just Cincinnati. It was, as I mentioned, Texas, the Pacific Coast region as well. Uh, this is the beginning of many hearings we need to have because clearly, unfortunately, the Obama administration is not attempting to get to the root problem, and that leaves many Americans saying perhaps they are the problems. Perhaps they were the ones that made the play calls uh, to, to launch in this, into right. this illegal behavior. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. We're going to continue to work hard, get to the truth, especially yes, when clearly there are obvious contradictions here. But um, thank you both. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean.